Hello, my marvelous muses. How we doing, guys? So, no haul tonight. Oops. Wow. Just almost dumped the table over. <laughs> so, we're going to do something different. Uh, I just kind of want to play around tonight. Tonight's going to be UV resin and a, and a vlog. There we go. Um, no change. Everything's pretty much the same. I did talk to my brother that I haven't spoken to in, oh my gosh, it's a half-brother. His father didn't want him to have anything to do with this. So for, I haven't spoken to him for, I'm going to say, 40 years. I'm 59 now. If not, it may be even more than that, maybe 45 years. So, since I was about probably 16... I haven't spoken to him. Uh, funny enough, he lives in the same town. But uh, he was out seeing my mom today, and my son called and put me on video chat, and I got to talk to him. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, other than that, that's about it. So what we're going to do tonight, I got these quite a while ago. I believe I got them off the Timu. And they are wood burning pins. And uh, we're going to kind of play around with this tonight and see if we can't make this into a coaster or something. Or even just a little, maybe a, it's kind of big for a magnet. But I just kind of want to see. So, you basically you draw your design on here. Well, I'm going to do. And if you can't draw a leaf freehand, you can use stencils. You could sketch it on probably lightly with a pencil prior to it. Uh, I'm just doing a basic leaf on this one. We might I've got two of them out here, so we might try them with it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to heat it up. I kind of leave it be. I have a bottle of water here in case I need it. But I don't heat super a lot at one time. But you go around the edges of your design here. Okay, we're going to let it sit a second. You can see the design in the wood. this whole leaf in here with the wood and then I'm going to kind of go just slightly around it and that's what we have there so far so good so I was going to have a little talk with you guys tonight and just tell you a little bit about me. Anybody that's new to the channel, some of you guys know because you guys have been with me for a while. Uh, my name is Marva. Welcome if you guys are new. I appreciate y'all coming. If you guys are my OG muses, thanks for being here guys. I appreciate y'all so much. Um, got my coffee here. I am a coffee drinker if you do not know. Uh, I was born in Wichita, Kansas, and uh, but I grew up south of there, about about an hour north east northwest, sorry, northwest of Oklahoma City, a little town called Enid. Uh, every year, Enid puts on what we call a band festival. That's like the big thing in Enid. Is once a year, all the marching bands from high schools across the United States come and compete there. 
Uh, in fact, growing up, we had t-shirts that were made for that time of year that said, Where the hell is Enid? Um, it was part of the Cherokee Strip. Uh, it was part of the land run. Uh, fairly small town. Really, the only thing that keeps the town going is the fact that there is a uh, Air Force Base. We have Vance Air Force Base, and they train the T-38 pilots. So... That's the main reason the town has a whole lot going on there, if anything. And uh, I'm going to lightly sand a little bit of this, kind of, just to kind of take a little bit of this really dark, dark part off. And uh, so I grew up there, um, moved to Oklahoma City, got a degree in graphic design. Um, I worked for a newspaper for a while in Yukon. Oklahoma, moved back to my, I call it my hometown, it's not my hometown, but Enid, moved back to Enid, and uh, went to work at a camera shop, and this was right on the verge of when digital was coming through, in fact, we got one of the first digital cameras there was, uh, we had an Olympus little thing, that you couldn't even make a wallet size without it looking digital, they were just little bitty, the pixels were horrible on them. But it was new, and it was something cool that nobody had, you know, that we hadn't seen before, and we were excited for it. And, uh, so we, we were thrilled, you know, it was like, oh, something new. Well, I ended up, uh, at that point, I was selling SLR cameras. I was selling the cameras I was doing in, at home in my spare time. I was doing black and white developing. I had a dark room. Uh, I really got into the cameras and to the photography, and I had sold a lady a camera, and it was, this was, you know, man, it was primarily a manual camera. Anyway, she took an advanced portrait photography class, and because it was an advanced class, you had to use the camera in manual setting. You couldn't use it in automatic, and she didn't know what an f-stop and a shutter speed was, so she realized one class in that she was in over her head. And she didn't know what she was going to do. So she asked the instructor if she paid for me to take the class, even though I'd missed one class, because of my experience at the camera shop, if I could, could join. And he said, yeah. So she came to me and offered to pay my tuition to a photography class. So if I was to tutor her along the way. So I did. She paid for me to take the class. Uh, afterwards, I did a lot of, did a lot of weddings, a whole lot of weddings. Uh, I got really good at photo editing. I could take people out of photos, put them in photos. Uh, my very first one, I'll never forget the woman came in and had a family photo of her and her husband and her kids. And she said, he's no longer in the picture. Can you take him out of this one? And I went into Photoshop and I proceeded to take him out of the photo and after that I got really really good at that really good well ended up I worked at photography studio for a while ended up working at Hobby Lobby over the years I worked there for two different times I worked there for about five years all together loved the job okay I love my department and I loved Hobby Lobby, period. It was it was just everything there I love, you know, all the art supplies and stuff. So it was a it was a job I was very pleased with, let's just say. Uh, the company, yeah. And it wasn't a company, it was the new manager, new young manager. So he came in and he was all I don't know, he was just he was different. I'd had the same manager for four and a half years. Got along fabulous with him. And this guy was just very, he was young and very cocky and very disrespectful. So I didn't stay. So I ended up going to work at an auction channel. And we had this little auction where the guy would get on there and you'd have tables set up. And he had uh, anywhere from 10 to 12 tables a night, depending on how much stuff he had. And I was the person on TV that would show the items and you would call in and bid on them. 
and you could call in and be like, oh, I'm going to bid $5 on it. And then somebody else call in and bid 10 and somebody else call in and bid 15 Well, I had to go through and describe all the items, show the items, talk about the items on camera. So I was always fairly comfortable on the camera. Um, so it wasn't anything, I was, in fact, it, you know, it didn't bother me. My daughter tried to do it. She couldn't, she couldn't handle it. She's like, I can't do it. She got all, her face was red. She looked like she was going to pass out because he wanted her to be able to learn to do it too. And I was the only one that could do it. I worked for him for a while and then I ended up going to work as a manager. I managed three convenience stores at the same time, three shell stations. I did that for a few years. And, uh, ended up not too long after that moving to Kansas City and getting with my husband, Jeff. And Kansas City, I worked different jobs. I worked at a call center. I was a trainer. Um, and it ended up, the same job, I ended up transferring. I'm new, putting UV resin on here, guys, if you don't know. Um, ended up transferring with the same job to Louisville, Kentucky. And got there. There was a hurricane in, like, Mississippi, down in the Gulf. And Kentucky got the winds that year, like, really bad from this. Hurricane. Well, there's a lot of trees in Kentucky, and wind and trees do not make a good combination because it was horrible. For like a week, we couldn't leave the house. We had no power. Trees down everywhere. You couldn't get off your street. It was pretty bad. It was a bad situation. So, um, we ended up, ended up not staying with that job. They closed down the branch. Same as they had in Kansas City and didn't tell nobody this after I had transferred all the way to Kentucky for it. Two weeks later, they said, oh, we're, it was a call center. Uh, we were a Sprint vendor site, and they lost the contract with Sprint. And they thought they were going to get to keep it at a few of the centers, and they ended up not getting to keep it at any of them. So I ended up, here I am in Kentucky, me and my husband. We're in Kentucky, and we just... We, did, we decided, you know, we were there, we were going to stay. So, I ended up getting a job at the zoo. And I was, when I first started, I was a front gate photographer. I was a person that when you walk in the front gate of an amusement park or a zoo, it stops you to take a souvenir photograph. Well, the first year I went from being a line employee, I, I started around Halloween that year. It was only... Our season was only through Halloween, so I started a couple months before Halloween. I worked that two months. Well, then in February, where they started hiring everybody back again, I got called back, and I had worked my way up to a lead position by the time we went full-time on Memorial Day weekend. Well, that same day, our manager that they had just hired that year She was new. She gets in there. It's Memorial Day weekend. You can imagine. We're slammed. And she freaks out and walks out right then and there. Well, they brought a guy in to be manager that year because they needed a manager like ASAP. They brought him in. We had, at the time, we had a front gate photo is what we called it. We also had a a body art stand, which was face painting, and glitter tattoos. We did glitter tattoos, where basically you just put glue on the kid, and you put a stencil and glue, and I know you guys have seen the glitter tattoo kits, probably if you've got kids or grandkids, you've probably seen them. And, uh, then we, over the years, we had other items. We had what they called, uh, animals, where... You remember years ago when you were in school and you made the turkey out of your handprint? Well, Commons, the company I worked for, created a animal for pretty much every animal you can think of and then some. So we had animals. We had that the entire time I did the operation. 
and then uh, throughout the years we'd have different things. At one point we had hair wrapping where we literally you take a strand of their hair, well, like a little bunch of their hair, and you put you wrap it in string and you put beads on it, and it's pretty neat. Uh, but we had hair wrapping. And then, um, toward the end, we got henna tattoos. Uh, we tried doing, we were going to do, uh, they had a rope course thing. We were going to do photos on it. We tried that. Uh, we did green screen photos by the train. We had another area where they did dinosaurs. And you could walk through, like, an exhibit where there were animatronic dinosaurs, and we took photos up there. So, basically, it was, it was an art operation. At the zoo but it was wasn't owned by the zoo it was owned by a company that is amazing i worked for them for 10 years and they were probably the best company i've ever worked for in my life and i like i said i've i've had quite a few jobs in my life and that was probably one of the best the company was a family-owned company created by a woman she was a portrait artist and she started the whole whole thing which I thought was really cool. I admired the fact that she started this business back when women didn't start businesses, you know. And, uh, she struggled, but she made a very, very, very good company out of this. I mean, great company. Uh, I worked for them for 10 years. I was manager of the operation for 10 years. Well, okay, nine years. And my husband was a diabetic, and he was a diabetic with no control over his blood sugar. Uh, over the years, his blood sugar was so high. I never knew for the first couple of years we got together, I never knew his meter said anything other than high. His glucose monitor, I thought it just said high, H-I. And uh, so over the years, it did a lot of damage to his body. And, uh, it made it where it, he didn't heal very well. Well, he got a sore on his foot, which got infected, and it went to the bone, and they had to amputate one leg. Well, about a year later, another sore on the other foot. They tried treating it. He was in wound care. Nothing. And they ended up amputating the second leg. At which point, he was in a wheelchair, and... In his wheelchair, he fell off of an eight-foot balcony and broke his elbow and his wrist. They ended up fusing the wrist completely straight where he couldn't bend it like this or like this or it was just permanently like this. And the elbow, they had done two surgeries on it and were wanting to do a third or they were just going to fuse the elbow in place, um, which basically made him impossible to get in and out of the wheelchair by himself. I was pretty much his sole caregiver 90% of the time. Uh, I did have friends, family, occasionally that helped, neighbors when we moved down here. I had a wonderful neighbor. She's my friend now, one of my friends, and she helped because I was still working the full time. So it made it really hard uh, to be able to take care of him and still work so we're still in Kentucky at that point well he gets both legs amputated and breaks his arms and the winters in Kentucky just got brutal guys I mean we're talking brutal I'll attach a video I've got a video of me doing a face paint at the zoo I'll attach it at the end of here if you want to see it if not just click off and we're done here um, but the winters got really bad, and he was just like, I can't do another winter here. We've got to do something different. So I went to the company, and I said, look, you know, I know we have parks in Florida and California. I wanted to go to California. I wanted to go to the San Diego Zoo and work there. Uh, I knew the manager. I would have went in just as a regular employee, but I would have still been with the company, and I, I know how I am. I would have worked my way up in no time, probably been his assistant at some point, or at least up in, you know, like a supervisor category. And, uh, let's see, what's time? And 
but my husband wanted to move to Florida. He had it in his head. We were, he wanted to come here. So originally we had, I talked with the company and they said, well, we have a park and they we're in SeaWorld and we are in Bush Gardens down here in Florida. And they said, well, we can transfer you to either one. So I was going to go to Bush Gardens in Tampa. That was my plans. We had already started looking at places in Tampa. And we were going to go in November at the end of season. I've trained my replacement, which is an amazing young lady. She is amazing. She's one of my best friends today. Still, uh, I love her to pieces. She comes and takes me on adventures. If there's a picture of me kayaking on my channel, on the beginning of my channel, that's she took me kayaking twice. And uh, she's just, she's amazing. Amazing young lady. And uh, I had to, I've had the pleasure in my life of working with some spectacular young men and women. I really have. And they have grown up. I've watched them grow up over the years. One of them just got married. Uh, another one of them's got, uh, a couple of them have got, one of them had a daughter right after she quit working for us. And then she, now I think she's got another daughter on the way. Um, another young lady I worked with has now just had a baby on the 4th of July, and she's already got one son, so I've had the pleasure of working with some really, really great people, well, we moved, we, uh, about two weeks, I mean two weeks, about, uh, two months before we were supposed to move, the owner of the company's son comes up, and he says, I hear you want to move to Florida, and I said, yeah, and he said, well, how do you feel about Miami? I said, I, you know, I was like, I didn't know we had a park in Miami. Well, we were in the Miami Seaquarium, which is a smaller toned down version of SeaWorld. So, uh, I said, well, let me talk to my husband. I went home and talked to him. He's like, yeah, that's fine. Well, I said, okay, when do you need me there? He said, yesterday. I said, okay. He said, the place is, they've had the contract for a year and they haven't had a manager for nine months out of that year. Which meant the employees that were hired were just kind of, they would come in when they wanted to. They weren't in uniform half the time because they had no supervisor directly over them. They had the park that occasionally would be like, hey, they didn't show up today till noon. But they didn't have a supervisor directly over them at the park making sure that they were there consistently. Making sure that the stand was open and that they were doing what they were supposed to be doing. So, uh, we had a two week period where we had to get everything up and move. Well, I didn't know at the time. I'm not from Florida. Never been to Florida. But I didn't realize at the time when it said 30 miles and 30 minutes that that was a big fat lie. <laughs> it was, it's 35 miles from here to the Miami Seaquarium from my house, which in Louisville, that's about a 40 minute drive, maybe 45. You know, no biggie. Kind of take back roads, whatever. Not a big, big issue. But here, the highway, main highway, was the only way to get there. 95. And if anybody's ever driven in Florida, oh my God. Most of the time, going there wasn't horrible in the morning because I didn't have to be there till 10, so it wasn't too bad. I'd get there. I could leave home by about 8.30 and be there by 10, before 10. Coming home, I got off work at 6 o'clock at night, and there were nights I didn't get home until 8 o'clock. And we moved here on my birthday. Same, funny enough, we moved to Kentucky, to Louisville, on my birthday. Apparently, moving on my birthday was a thing. And, uh, so we moved down here on my birthday, September the 3rd. And my husband had been having issues with his kidneys. They said he was going through kidney failure and he was going to have to be on dialysis. And we went to, he went to see a new doctor. He had never seen her before. He just moved here. He got his disability set up. He got his doctor and he uh, goes to this doctor and she's like, oh my God, your blood sugar's been this high for all these years. I'm sure you have heart problems. And she puts him on heart medicine. And for a week, he took this heart medicine. And one morning, he's asleep in the room, and 
I'm sitting on the porch about six feet away from him and talking to our friend, the one who had come down to look after him, make sure he was all right. Cool. Um, I was talking to her, came back in one more time to check on him, and he had passed away. At which point I decided I'm staying. Well, I stayed. I worked at the Sequarium. 2020 hit. It was actually December 2019. The attendance at the Sequarium, like, dropped drastically. Drastically. I think that was pre-virus. I think that was actually... I think it had already started to take effect in places, and that's why it, we had no attendance. Because we had a lot of cruise people. And I think that was, had something to do with it. So, um, the company came to me and said, look, we're pulling out. There's not enough attendance for us to even have, you know, we're not going not gonna to make it, be able to make any money here. There's not enough people coming in, period. There were days we had 100 people. And they had a whole formula set up. You knew how many out of those 100 people kind of average was going to buy something. How many were you going to let you take uh, and do all we did there were face paint and henna tattoos. And it was like, you know, on day, school days, most of it was adults coming in. So they're not going to get face paint. So we, we really struggled. And they pulled out in December of 2019. So, of course, during that time, I drew my unemployment. Um, during lockdown, I took guitar lessons online. Because I'd always wanted to learn to play the guitar. Always. That was a dream, to learn to play the guitar. And I uh, bought a sewing machine, and I started making masks. And... I turned this room into my sewing room at the time, and art room, because I've always liked to draw and paint. I still draw. Uh, I love a painting and acrylic. I have a stack of paintings. If I stacked them all up, probably as tall as me, that I've done. Um, I tried doing acrylic painting. I did acrylic pouring on my channel when I first started it. It didn't really do too great. Uh, I tried doing acrylic paintings. And uh, I did a couple, but nothing that would really get a lot of views off of them. Unless you're, like, really spectacular at it, you don't get a whole lot of views. But I noticed when I was doing resin videos, I do an occasional resin video, I was getting quite a few hits. And uh, at that point, it was pretty much UV resin. And I wasn't real thrilled with it because I was using cheap brands of resin. And uh, I wasn't happy with the cheap brand of resin. In fact, I still have a bottle of it that I've never finished because I wasn't thrilled with it. This is one of them here. Um, that one isn't bad. There was actually other brands that were way worse. Way, way worse. So I was doing these UV resin videos and I, somehow or another, I don't remember how I ended up deciding to buy some molds and to try regular resin. And at that point, I was hooked. I was hooked. Hooked, 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 hooked. And I had always contemplated starting a YouTube channel. Like, oh, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. But then a part of me is like, who's going to want to watch me do anything? <laughs> On YouTube, why, what's going to make me different? Why are people going to want to watch me? So, I started a YouTube channel. And, uh, originally I was going to do music video reactions, because I love watching those, love watching the video reactions, love them. So I was going to do that, so I thought, oh, how fun, I'll do video reactions, it'll be fun. And, uh, needless to say, the more I thought about it, the more I decided I wanted to do resin. And I pretty much kind of switched over to resin shortly there. And so 
here I am now, nine months later. Uh, I have, I absolutely love what I'm doing. I've only had two other jobs in my life that I like as much as what I'm doing now. And I don't even know if I like them as much, but I like them. And that was at the zoo, managing an art operation. And then the other was when I was doing my photography. I still love to do photography. I have an older Nikon. I would love if I had room to have a dark room. I just don't have the room for one here. But I would love to have a dark room again. And do black and white developing. Something about watching the pictures show up is just... It's epic. So I was kind of like, well... What am I going to do? So I'm going to do a YouTube channel. Well... I love my channel. I love my subscribers. I love you guys so much. You guys... You guys lift me up when I need it. Um, you educate me on things that I'm not sure on sometimes. Like maybe I'm not 100% sure if I'm doing this right. And like the tumblers. New to that. Still not, still not great at it. But I'm learning. I've always showed my mess ups as well as my successes because I want people to realize you know sometimes you have mess ups and it's okay because you know what I have a poster right in front of me that said there's no mistakes only happy accidents you know you heard this praise you if you got lemons make lemonade well I want people to know that it's okay to have to make lemonade sometimes you know so I will always show my failures as well as my successes. So if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And, uh... So I've... I've always been pretty transparent. I've talked to you guys about my... Medical issues, which, by the way, I don't get to have the CT scan done Monday, which I was supposed to do because I got a phone call today that they can't get it to go through my insurance, and apparently they won't pay for it. I don't know. That's what she said. So, she said, uh, because they won't pay for it, I'm going to have to postpone that, which kind of sucks because... I don't know. I thought I was going to get to get this stuff done sooner than later, but apparently not. So she's going to try to get it approved for insurance, but she said until then I can't do it. Can't do anything until then. So, we're at a standstill right now. At a standstill right now. On everything. I am going to Oklahoma August 5th through the 12th. I plan to have at least a few videos. And possibly while I'm there, I will get a Hobby Lobby run in. At the Hobby Lobby I used to work at. And I'll film a haul video. as well so that way you guys can check out what I got uh, regardless of what happens I originally I had said if told myself that if something happened I was gonna do with my medical issues and I wasn't gonna go but the more I got thinking about it the more I realized I hadn't been home in eight years I've got grandkids I haven't seen. I've got a son that I talk to. I mean, I talk to him online and we video chat, but I haven't seen him in eight years. I haven't seen my brother in eight years. I've got a sister-in-law. I've got nieces and nephews and grandkids and...
probably a few friends that I haven't seen in years that I want to, you know, I'd like to talk to again or whatever. So I decided that I'm going to go ahead and go. Um, tickets are booked. I'm going to go. I'm going to go see my family. Uh, just this incident with my mom. Makes me realize that tomorrow is not promised to anybody. Oh, give me a second, guys. Yeah, that tomorrow isn't promised to anyone. And that if I pass up this chance now to go, I may be re regretting it later. And I don't want to do that. I can't lie, I already regret not going sooner to see my mother. You know, and... But that's not something that I can change right now. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to 5th of August through the 12th to go to Oklahoma to go see my family. And, uh, yeah. Probably see the brother I haven't seen in 40 plus years. Um, so yeah, that's it. just kind of a something to do night video. I, I don't even know the project didn't turn out that great, but hey, it's whatever. It's something fun. I wanted to try these pins. I've had them forever, and I'm like, I haven't even tried them at all. Uh, which I want to see something else here. I want to do another one after this, because I want to try something else. I've got another one here. I want to see what happens. So I'm going to try something to see what it does. And, uh, but yeah, that's about it, guys. And that's pretty much the story of my life. I have uh, five children. I have four boys, one girl. Uh, my grandson lives here with me. He's 24 years old. He is mildly autistic. Very antisocial. Very, but he's a good kid. Pretty much anything I ask him to do, he'll do. I taught him how to do some cooking. Uh, he can operate the microwave, but that was about it. Uh, I have taught him how to cook in the air fryer a few things. He can actually make a few things there. So he's going to be fine. Uh, I'll just get him some simple meals while I'm gone. Because he's going to stay here. Like I said, he's 24. He's He can take care of himself. He just... Like I said, he's very antisocial. My friends are going to come check on him while I'm gone. So he's not, I don't have to worry about him or anything. Which I'm glad. Uh, they're all looking out for him. But, yeah, I'm just, just a been a lot going on lately. I thought, well, I've got a lot of new subscribers in the past few months. That somebody messaged me earlier and was like, hey, I'm... They met, messaged me the other day and was like, I don't know what your name is. Yeah. So, my name is Marva. That's where the Marvelous Artsy came from. By the way, guys, somebody had asked me about this. I started a Facebook group. And it's called the Marvelous, it's called Marvelous Muses. Um, you can look it up. It is, I will have to accept you. You can request to be accepted into the group. To join the group and I will accept you because I want to keep trolls out. This is going to be a group where everybody can, you can share your resin pieces that you've made, whether you have a channel or not. You can ask questions. This is going to be a safe place, guys. Nobody's, I don't want anybody talking mean to anybody. If you've got recommendations or suggestions, that's fine, but nicely, guys. And you all are good about, that, good about that. But there have been an occasion where I've had a troll or two in here, I know. And... Like I said, none of my regular people I know would do anything like that. But there have been trolls on occasion that, that have gotten into the chat. And uh, I don't want that to happen over there on the Facebook. I want everybody to be kind to one another and courteous. And uh, if I can make sure it's somebody that I know that I, I see who you are and that you're a real person. You're not a fake account. You know, so... Um, I do have a Timu order coming, guys. 
It'll be here probably by next Friday. Uh, if not sooner, but we're going to do the haul next Friday. Fridays were supposed to be haul days. Well, I didn't have a team order today. And I didn't go anywhere to get anything this week. So, kind of been just here at the house doing doing things around here to stay busy. Uh, I have started working on my art. I mean, it's been so hot here. So hot. Well, it rained today. And it has cooled off a little bit this evening. So, I came out here this evening and I have actually reorganized all of my big jars of glitter. And uh, I'm thrilled about that. Yay! I have them all on a big shelf where I can see them and I have access to them and I know what I've got. And uh, I've got a little bit more organizing to do. And it won't be long. I'll have some pretty nice area. Um, April bought me a big ring light. Uh, because I have another filming area, but it's so dark over there. I had a little bitty ring light and another light I got the Timu, and even with that, it was very dark. Uh, April had purchased a ring light for me when she was down here. Thank you again, April. And uh, I had installed that this evening, and I have it now over the top of the other filming area, so when I want to use it, hopefully by tomorrow I can work on this area, the rest of this table here, and I'm going to try to have everything organized to the point that I can... Uh, have two areas to film because like I said when I go to Oklahoma I'm going to double down a couple weeks before and I'm going to film extra videos and I'm taking got a new laptop I'm taking my new laptop with me and I'm going to download the images to it the videos to it so then while I'm there I can just drop videos still enjoy my time with my family but I can drop videos to show you guys so this is what I've got on this one you can see where the wood burning was, but it's burnt a lot of the wood itself, right? So now I want to try something different. This one's kind of cool, actually. I kind of like that. And I'll probably put some felt or something on the back of there. If I was doing this permanently, I would probably use regular resin and just prop them up on something and do a flood coat. But I just wanted to, like I said, I'm just trying this to see if these pins work, number one. So we're going to shake the pin up here. What do we want to do? Let me think what I want to do here. Okay, I know. Okay, let's see. Eek. to draw on wood because the notch is in it because the grooves in it there we go So, like I said, these pins came from Timu. You get three in a pack. Uh, you can use them on birch board, linden plank, aspen planks, poplar board, walnut planks, or any high-density processing board. Pretty cool. 
No instructions. None whatsoever. Yeah, no instructions. No instructions on the pins. Uh, just says what not to do. No warning, first aid, in case of eyes, flush immediately. For 15 minutes, seek medical attention. You contact with skin, wash skin thoroughly with soap and water. If swallowed, seek medical attention immediately. So don't swallow this stuff, guys. Don't eat it, don't touch it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try. I'm going to do like we did a minute ago. There we go. It is pretty cool, though. I hate this stupid thing. I hate this torch so bad because it is so hard to fill. It's a butane one and it is so hard to fill. I bet I filled this thing six times tonight trying to get it to fill. And it doesn't work. Why? I hate them. And they have the stupid little things but none of the things fit it right. Nothing. Uh. Anyway, what my idea was is now that let's see what this does here. I want to see. Nope, it doesn't wipe off. Okay, so that's a good thing. But. Could do if you could sand it off. I wonder if you could lighten the burnt part down without taking off because you know, it takes off the it's like it's taking off this part. hate this thing. Alright, that, that was my idea tonight, guys, anyway. Silly video, me just wanting to talk, tell you guys about myself. Um, I'm still amazed by the fact that I have subscribers in so many other countries. And so many other cities, I know I have several in Texas, some in Australia, several in Canada. Quite a few in Michigan. Uh, I know there's a couple, two or three in Michigan. Uh, two or three down here in Florida. That I mean, and these are just ones that I know for a fact. Um, what else? I said, I know over in Australia, because I've had a couple of you tell me, if I ever get over there, you're going to show me around. I'm going to hold you to that. Uh, I'm trying to remember where else. So guys, hey, if you think about it tonight, just drop in the comment section where are you from. Like I said, I know where a few of you are from that I've talked to on a regular basis. Uh, I know where you guys live. I mean, I don't know where you live, but I know what city and state you're in. Um, or I know what state, at least, for some of you. But uh, yeah, if you haven't, you know, if you're new, drop it in there where you guys are from. Uh, I want to thank anybody who's bought me a coffee. I've had a couple people today that purchased a coffee and well wishes, and I really appreciate that, guys. Uh, if you bought anything off my Amazon wish list, I appreciate that. If you use my links to purchase anything off of Timu, Amazon, the Washi Tape Shop, Let's Resin, Resineers, uh, any of those guys, I appreciate that as well. Just hanging out, commenting, subscribing, liking the videos. All of that helps too. That tells YouTube that you like my videos and that they'll put them out there for more people to see. 
and uh, which that's a good thing, right? Uh, again, if you're interested in the Facebook group, go check it out, Marvelous Muse, um, and uh, I'll see if I can't link it down in the description box. I don't know. I tried to do the link earlier, and it wouldn't let me do it. It was made me send it to somebody, and I'm like, I don't want to send it. It wouldn't let me copy the link. But uh, I will put it down under the name of the channel, or the name of the group, and go in and just look for a Facebook group by Marvelous Muse. And you'll see in there, it's a resident channel, that we're a resident channel. All things resident and crafts and art. So, um... I'm going to call it a night, guys. I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. I hope you are happy, healthy, safe, and blessed. hope your resin cures beautifully. Your craft projects turn out amazing. And I will see you guys tomorrow night. Bye. What they just can do is come and get their face painted. I need to introduce you to Marva. And Marva, who are you working on this morning? Uh, I'm working on Candace. We are turning her into a cheetah. Uh, 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 yes. Yeah, uh, uh huh. Yes, very exciting. So, did you choose uh, the face paint for Candace, or did Candace choose this? Uh, actually, I chose it. You did? Yes. Tell us why Marvin chose to paint a cheetah on her face. Uh, I think it'll be great, and I think her kids are going to love it, and I think the public's going to love it. And we're at the zoo. Why not a cheetah? It's a fun place to be. Yeah. Candace, you look lovely. Talk about some of the other animals that kids can come out and, and uh, you will paint. Oh, be a man, good uh, we can video. do about any animal there is. Uh, we do uh, pandas, we do a puppy dog, we do a kitty cat, uh, we can do a tiger, a lion. Uh, we can even do a wild cat, but I didn't say that here. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can do a lot of different animals and about any kind of face paint that you can imagine, Halloween or otherwise. Is this an enjoyable experience, Candace? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's fun. I can't wait to see the finished product. I told her to surprise me. I think you will be uh, quite surprised. I think you're going to be hit when you go pick up your uh, your children from school today when you're in the carpool line. I think so. Yes. I think you're going to be the coolest mom at school. Yeah. All right, for more information on the world's largest Halloween party and to see the finished product, just log on to our website. Okay.